everybody welcome back to sitting pretty it's your girl lolo and as you all know i just recently moved into my own place and it is a milestone within my life that i have finally accomplished and i know when you are a person with a disability living independently can be a very very intimidating thing should you have the ability to live on your own you live pretty independently but maybe you're just ready to take that next step and get your own place i am here to encourage you that you can do so for instance i do have a caregiver my caregiver does not live with me uh, because i don't need that level of attention but i do need a caregiver period for so many different things to plan and prep all the things that i need throughout the week and to help me with a lot of the heavy duty lifting of living on your own a caregiver is probably the number one thing that'll help you when living independently now for me because my disability affects my muscles and my muscle mass and my muscle strength there are a lot of things within my home particularly the bathroom that i need in order to assist myself with being able to live independently and if you have similar limitations as i do then this will probably be very helpful if you're not already aware of these things so what i wanted to do was bring you guys into my bathroom my new bathroom because it's my new place ah! sorry i'm still geeking out over it i'm sorry i just okay nonetheless i wanted to bring you guys into my bathroom because that is where a majority of my assistive technology is within my home everything else i could pretty much use as is but that's where it's like i actually use some level of equipment on an everyday regular basis because that is where i have my most limitations and where the possibility of hurting myself is higher in the restroom than it is in any other part of my place so i took the day to go into my bathroom give you some demos of how the equipment works and how I use it and how helpful it is for me. So check it out. Right, so here's my demonstration. Yes, I am in PJ clothes, but you know, it's all about keeping it real. I won't stand pretty, you feel me? So yes, so what is great about having the raised toilet seat is that it positions my body to already be elevated because for me, being in the standing position is much easier to get around than being seated and having to get up and move around that way. So that's why you have the raised toilet seat plus the handlebars to help boost yourself off the seat. So I'm just going to demonstrate how I get off the toilet once I'm already sitting down and handling my business. You see what I'm saying? So I just put my hands up, push myself up, and now I'm standing. Super easy, right? So now the transfer bench is a little different, but essentially the same thing. So what you do is because you're already outside of the tub, come and you sit down, gently sit down, and then you just turn yourself towards the edge it's kind of strange because it's more difficult to get in the tub with clothes on than it is without the clothes because the seat actually has a texture on it and i think if i'm not mistaken it's probably there because they know if skin is touching it that it'll have more traction than it would if you were wearing clothes because people would wear clothes to get into the tub or the shower or at least i don't think people wear clothes but who knows? So, yes, you sit on the seat, you turn yourself in, and then you just grab one leg at a time if you want to rest your foot on the edge. So sometimes I do it like this, sometimes I put my legs all the way in, and then you just scooch over, and the water can be running from the tub down at the bottom, and then you just put your legs in. And now you're in the shower. You know, 
you shower, you bathe, you know, all of that. And then it's time to get out the shower. So you turn the water off. And even when your body is wet, it still doesn't slide. I mean, obviously you have to be careful, but in general, your skin does not slide just because it's wet, which is also great. Again, I believe it's probably because of the texture that is on top. The texture does not bother your skin. At least it doesn't bother me. I'm not uncomfortable with it, but they do have different styles of transfer benches that are cushioned and don't have the texture, you know, just in case you might um, have very sensitive skin to different types of textures. So then, once you're done, you just take one leg out. And you take the other leg out. And you want to turn this up to the edge. And then, you look out the seat. And now you're done. And then you got your towel right here to dry off. And that's it. And then, you, I'm sure plenty of you are like, well, if you're in the shower and you have that thing sticking out, then wouldn't that get in the way of the shower curtain? Well, let me show you how I did it. So, you see the shower curtain is completely closed. I mean, it is sticking out a little bit. Obviously, you can't do anything about that. But what you can do, which is what I did, and now they do have ones that are already pre-cut and made, but what I did was I cut a hole. And I don't know if you can tell that I cut a hole in the shower curtain, but you see how there's a hole right there? So the curtain, the lining, see the plastic lining to keep the water in there? It's still there on each side of the bench. I just cut a hole, and I actually cut a hole that was too big. So I might just get another shower liner, and a shower liner is only like 10 bucks at the most sometimes, and cut it more, you know, accurately just so it can stick out and keep all the water in. But it's very crucial to cut a hole in your shower liner in order to avoid, you know, major water spillage over the edge because your transfer bench is sticking out and then the water from the shower is splashing all over the place. So those are the different types of equipment that I use in my bathroom. All of the items that I use in my bathroom is in the description box below. So you can order all of these things down below should you need it. You have to be very careful with this type of equipment because measurements is key. So before purchasing anything, make sure you measure your toilet, the space you have between the countertop and the toilet, the how wide your bathtub is. All of those things make a difference because there's so many different types of forms of this equipment that can be purchased to make your life a lot easier. So you never want to buy the wrong size and you have to return it and a lot of times because these are hygiene products a lot of companies don't allow returns just because they're hygiene products and you know you just want to keep these things as sterile and clean as possible so please 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 make sure you check your measurements first before purchasing anything if you live independently what are some things that help you around your home that could possibly others make sure you subscribe I'm not playing okay I be dropping good gems y'all need to be subscribing I hope y'all subscribing and sharing and all of that okay so make sure you do that all right until next time everyone it's sitting pretty baby